morning. First, congratulations yeah. on the very strong numbers. Thank Let's you. begin with China, which contributed in a strong way to your performance. Do you see China contributing even more going forward in the, in the coming quarters? Well, we certainly hope that that will be the case, but uh, it's not a given that it can be done just like that. Uh, the, the team on the ground had to work very hard. What we would expect for the coming quarters is really for operating uh, PADME or operating performance to remain fairly robust and fairly stable. And uh, we believe that uh, with the opening of our new reference city in uh, Shenzhen, Hangzhou, as well as in Shanghai, as well as uh, the opening of our capital more in Wuhan, we expect this to contribute towards uh, operating performance in the, the next few quarters. So pretty upbeat. When you take a look at China, it accounts for 43% of your assets in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable with that? Are you looking to grow it? What's, what's the percentage mm -hmm. that you'll be okay with going forward? I think we are, we are comfortable with uh, the 43%. We are even comfortable if it should go up to 50% or slightly above 50%. Uh, given the size of China market, China is, is a very big market. It is currently the, the number two, the world second largest economy in the world. Is uh, in the near future, it will be the largest economy in the world. So, from that perspective, having about fifty percent of our uh, the capital uh, deployed in the, the world largest market. Uh, I think it's something that we, we are comfortable with. But why bet big on China when there's so many risks? I mean, we're yeah. talking about a government that's mm -hmm. trying to cool down yes. the property sector. We have yes. rising debt, uh, financial mm -hmm. risks. Why are mm -hmm. you so optimistic about this property market? It, well, first of all, uh, this is a big market, and uh, China is uh, at a stage where they, we still expect to see relatively high uh, economic growth. Uh, currently, is at about 6.7%. The projection is that for the full year, it's likely to be somewhere in the region of 6.8 or 6.9%. So this is a very strong uh, performance from the GDP perspective. And uh, given that this is a very strong performance, there will always be demand for, for real estate, especially when you have the urbanization concurrently taking place in China. So risk-reward, you see... That is yes, worth yes, taking the yes, risk. Yes, I think the risk reward uh, of the opportunities in China justifies for us to put in the capital to invest in some of these projects. It, uh, there are some risks involved, uh, but that, as in all investments, there will be risks involved. But the risk reward that we see in China justifies this. On top of that, I think we have a very strong team on the ground that can help to mitigate many of these risks. I want to touch on Singapore, 35%, yeah. 34 35% yes. yes. of uh, your yes. assets right now. When you take yes. a look at property prices, they've been on a decline for 15 consecutive quarters. Mm. But mm. some outside in the last quarter, right. Right. just a slight decrease of 0.07%. You call yes. it stable. Is is that a sign of a turnaround in the Singapore mm. property market? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think if you look at the statistics, there are a lot more transactions happening in the last quarter compared to, say, a year ago. And uh, if you look at the price decline, it has sort of slowed down. Uh, we used to have much bigger decline on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, but uh, in the last quarter, as you just mentioned, the decline has been much smaller. So there's a sign that there is a sort of a bottoming out in the Singapore residential space. Uh, we look at the market and we look at uh, fundamentals on the market. I think the fundamentals has not shifted very much. Uh, what has really changed is that uh, for many of the investors who now put their capital or put their money into real estate, in, uh, residential real estate in Singapore, a lot of this is driven by the, the, the relative attractiveness versus a few other markets like, like uh, Hong Kong, London or some of the Australian market. Um, the entry, the barrier to entry or the transaction costs in some of these markets are even higher. You talked about how prices may be bottoming out, but do you see a rebound in Q3? And is that sustainable going forward? Because when you take a look at yes. the trend, mm -hmm. any rebound has been pretty inconsistent. Yes. I think for a rebound to, to take place in a more sustainable basis, there has to be uh, uh, overall improvements in the fundamentals. Right now, it's very much still liquidity driven. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, which is why I, the, the Monetary Authority of Singapore came out and mentioned that they are unlikely to, to relax the current uh, 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 tightening measures. So you see no further relaxation of uh, the measures? I mean, we saw the government yes. ease some of those measures for the first time in eight they years. Make some in adjustment. They make some adjustment to the... To, 
to two of the specifically to the seller stamp duty and also to the TDS uh, concerning certain group of uh, uh, property owners. But those are really minor adjustments that they make to to in a way to remove certain distortions that the current cooling measures have uh, on the market. So having done that, uh, I think the latest pronouncement from uh, or latest announcement that. Uh, 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 MAS uh, commented on was that they are unlikely to relax the policy this year or the timing is not right, the condition is not right for the relaxation. But we have seen transaction volumes going up. Could that lead to further tightening mm. instead? Um, well, I believe that uh, looking the current measures that we have in place are already very stringent po uh, policy. So. Um, unlikely to see further tightening but at the same time given the current market conditions it's unlikely that we will see a, a relaxation certainly not within this year. Mr Lim just one final question the luxury property market has been badly hit it's been hit the most mm. prices yeah. have come down 15 to 30 percent mm. have prices bottomed for the luxury property market do you see a, a turnaround do you see property prices coming up now? Generally as a market I do not see a, a strong pickup but I would say that there are pockets of opportunities that uh, individual buyers have gone in and they have picked up uh, certain properties which potentially may give them some upside.